All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bahashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. Hey, uh, this is Sons of Jacob. We're going to prophesy the downfall of America and uh, give you, hopefully give you clear understanding and edification of the word. <clears throat> this is Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. No. Oh. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Hey, so we're not supposed to be just living it up here. We're supposed to be happy here. It says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, right? But a gift destroys the heart. A gift, you were given things. And our women were given a lot of gifts, man. Uh, and, and a lot of our women have been destroyed based off of those gifts, uh, right? So they're not going to listen to us, right? They think, they think that we have failed them. And a lot of our men have failed them, right? But when they are given gifts by their enemies, who are they going to listen to? They're going to listen to their enemies. If your enemy gives you a gift, he is no longer your enemy now. That's what you think. Right. But, hey, sad to say, he's still your enemy, right? He doesn't mean you any well. It says, um, it's like it says, uh, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, right? Let me get you to get Baruch 3 and 8 through 9. Baruch 3, 8 through 9. But what I have you think? Psalms. Psalms. This is Psalm 83, verse 3. They have taken... Uh, crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. So we have been made to forget who we were, right? We have been made to forget who we were as a people. You are slaves here in, in your captivity, right? We are slaves here. It says, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. We no longer understand that the Hispanics are our people. They're our brothers, that the native Indians are our brothers. We've been made to forget who we were, right? We are the same people, man. We are the same nation. We have the same fathers, right? The same father, right? Did you have something else? That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Right, and that's what they did, Jeremiah 17 and 4, which we brought out several times today, right? He caused us to forget who we were, right? So they, they, they fulfilled their job, right? They did their job. Let me get that Baruch. Hey, bro. Uh, you believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible? Yes, hey, have we have you seen this before? Yes, sir, I have. You have? I think you have too. So you know what we out here doing? Yes, sir. So I have a question for you then. Do you know who you are according to the Bible? Hey, I'm an okay, all praises. Right. All praises. The Hebrew, Israelite, all praises. So do you know what's expected of you? One of the things we have to do, Stucky, I'm sorry, brother, that we have to continue to go over, over, over again on the streets. We have to remember to feed milk to the people because we have to be taught over and over again. Repetition is good for the mind. That's what they say. Yeah. And it is. Right. So we have to say it over and over again. So as an Israelite, as an Israelite man, what does the most high God expect from you? What does he expect from you? You said to be the best you can be and let nothing betray you. Let's find out what the Bible says. We're going to find out what the Bible says. What does the Most High God expect from you? He expects you to do something. You can either uh, uh, complete it or fail him, right? He will, either, he will either be pleased with you or be very disappointed in you, right? So we want him to be pleased with you. Go ahead. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Bring it out. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Verse 13. So, so let's go over real slow again. Go ahead. From, stop, from talking. It says, and now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require? So now that you know you're Israelite, what does he expect from you? But to fear the Lord thy God. So you're supposed to fear the Lord thy God, right? If you fear anybody, you're going to do what they tell you to do, Right? Right. To walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. It's going to tell you how to love him. Go ahead. Right. And it's going to tell you how to teach your kids how to love him. Right? Go ahead. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Right. And his That's how you love him. That's how you serve him. Keeping the commandments of the Lord. Right? Is there more? God. And, and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Right. So it's for your good that you keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. You see what I'm saying? 
This is how he's going to identify you when his son returns. All right, go ahead. This is First Kings 2 verse 1. Bring it out. Now the days of David drew not that he should die. So this is King David, right? He's speaking to his son. So he's drawn, he's, he's uh, about to die. He's about to pass away. Let's see what King David told his son. Go ahead. And he charged Solomon saying, He charged Solomon and he said this, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. He said, be strong and show yourself a man. How did he tell him to show himself to be a man? This is what makes a man a man. This is what separates men from boys. This is simply put, right? Go ahead. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. And do what? Keep, keep the, the charge of the Lord, Lord thy God. Go ahead. To walk in his ways. To walk in his ways. To keep his statutes uh -huh. and his commandments. To keep his statutes and his commandments. Right? So we got to know some of God's commandments. This is what you got to teach your kids. If you don't have kids, you got to teach your uh, nephews. Right? Let's get that. Um, Exodus. Come on, you got something? But well, we want to give you some of the commandments too, brother. I don't want to give you a whole, whole lot, but I want to give you some simple commandments for you to keep right we can all identify if a brother walk up if this brother walked up today i could be like that's that's an israelite brother that's a law keeper right there he loves god i can tell just by looking at him you know a police officer can tell by looking at you if you're breaking the law of the land he can look at you and see if you're breaking the law he can look at you and be like you only got your seatbelt on ticket right he can see oh i see that you ran that stop sign ticket you see what i'm saying he can identify you just by breaking the laws of the land. I can identify this brother because he keeps God's laws. God. Right? And this is what we are expecting. And we're, we're teaching our people. Right? We're teaching our brothers and sisters. Go ahead, though. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. So this is the end all that be all that King Solomon is saying. He's saying the same thing that his father taught him. His father taught him this. Hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For well, this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole job. This is the reason why you were created. This is the only reason why you were created, to keep God's commandments. Is that it? Fine. Hey, let me get that last part, too. For, uh, 14. But God shall bring every work into judgment. So everything that you do, whether it be bad or whether it be good, it's going to be brought into judgment, okay? With every secret thing, uh -huh. whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right, so everything that you do is going to be brought into judgment. The good works, faith, and keeping the commandments of the Most High God, right? If you have faith, you're going to keep commandments. Is there more on that? Let me get Exodus 20. Yes, so I want to, is there more on it? All right, go ahead. Uh, this is... First Kings 2 verse 2. Bring it out. I go the way of all the earth. Uh -huh. Be thou strong therefore and shew thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is, as it is written in the law of Moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So he's told us, he told his son how to prosper wherever he goes that's a blessing to teach your son that man to teach your son hey you're gonna prosper everywhere you go if you do this that's what i want to be able to tell my son i want to tell my children this is how you're going to prosper wherever you go you want your children to prosper right right so this is how you teach you teach your kids to prosper by following after the laws statutes and commandments we're going to give you a few laws brother i don't want to fill you up too much we planted the seed already the brother knows he's an Israelite. We know what the Most High God expects from you to keep his law, statutes, and commandments, right? All right, all praises. Go ahead. Um, this is Exodus 20 and 3. Yeah. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is a law. This is the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. Right? So now that you know that you're an Israelite, you have a duty, you have a responsibility, right? to be a chosen race, to be a superior race, a supreme race on this earth. You got to keep the commandment. You got responsibilities, brother. All right, go ahead. This is Ex uh, Exodus 20 and 7. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. You're not supposed to take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Go ahead. 
for the Lord will not hold him guiltless in the taking that taketh his name in vain. Uh -huh. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Today is the Sabbath day, right? This is the seventh day of the week. Today is the Sabbath day. You're supposed to keep it holy. It's going to tell you how to keep it holy. Do you know how to keep the Sabbath day holy? So, what did I know the spirit of my Bible when it stays in my sin? Okay. Let's find out a little bit according to the scripture how to keep it holy. Did you know something else? This is Exodus 20 and 8. Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So you're not supposed to work on the seventh day, right? You're supposed to rest today, okay? Um, you got six days to do whatever you want. You got six days to do whatever you want, not whatever you want, keeping the law such as commandments. But as far as going and buying and selling, trading on today, you're supposed to keep this day holy. This is supposed to be a different day. This is the day you really try to serve the Lord and put forth all your strength today. This is the covenant that he made with Israelites, right? So he made this for you and your children, yeah. right? So I want to make sure that you are, I don't know if anybody else got anything they want to bring out to the brother, but bro, oh, let me get uh, uh, number fringes, number 15. So this is something that you can do, brother. A simple, these are simple law, statutes, and commandments that you can follow to show God that you love him. Right. To, to, to be an example for your children, to be like, Pops, why you got that? You got any kids? Four, all oh, praises. So they can be like, Pops, why you got those on? Well, this is how I show God I love him. He said that I will prosper everywhere I go if I keep his thought, law, statutes, and commandments, right? All right. All right. This is Numbers 15 and 38. Bring it yeah. out. Speaking to the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the border of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which you used to go a horn. Right, so we're supposed to make fringes on the border of our garments throughout our generations so that we can remember the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. This is how you show him you love him, uh. by by uh, doing the law, statutes, and commandments, by wearing fringes. That's a simple law. That's very simple to do, When you say? Just put on fringes, right? But you gotta do more than that, right? You gotta, you gotta show, this is showing God you love him, man. Right, so I don't wanna overfill you, and if anybody got anything else they wanna show the brother, you know that you're an Israelite. You came up here and shut, you said that we were. You said that you were. Yeah, okay. All right, check this out. This one last scripture. This is Matthew 19 and 16. Hey, this is Christ yeah. speaking. Go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this is a, a, a young man coming to, hold on, brother. Hold on. This is a young man coming to Christ, asking Christ, what can I do to receive eternal life? Right? This is the question. And he said it to him, Why callest thou me good? And this is what Christ said. Why you call me good? There is none good but one. There is none good but one. Right? Christ, Christ is not the God of heaven and earth. He is a God, right? But he's not the God, right? He's showing you that there's a separation between him and his Father. Because a lot of people think that Christ is God. He's not the God, right? He is a God. But he's not the God. The Father is God. He said, why do you call thee? Why do you call me good? Read that again. Uh, why callest thou me good? Uh -huh. There is none good but one. There is none good but one. Go ahead. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. If you want eternal life, listen up. Listen up. If you want eternal life, let's hear what Christ said. If we want eternal life, listen up. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. What did Christ say? Keep the commandments. If you want eternal life, what did Christ say, brother? Keep he said, keep the commandments, right? All oh, praises. Oh, praise. And he, 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 he said unto them, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery. So what is he doing? Christ is quoting the Old Testament. Thou shalt do no murder, right? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. He's teaching the old laws, right, of God, right? If you want eternal life, keep the commandments of God, right? Go ahead. That shall not commit adultery. Uh -huh. That shall not steal. That shall not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, 
and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Man, he's teaching you the laws of God, what was taught to the children of Israel from the beginning. So if you want eternal life, what are you supposed to do, brother? Honor that. I'll pray. What is that? What is honoring? Let's see what the Bible said again. Get that again. Let's lock it. It's all right. Let's see what the Bible said again. Check this out, brother. And he said, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. So if you want eternal life, listen up. Keep the commandment. Do what? Keep, keep the, the commandment. Do what? Keep, keep the, the commandment. commandment. What does the Bible say? Keep, keep the commandment. What does the Bible say, brother? Keep the all praises. All praises. So if you want eternal life, our Lord and Savior, Christ, told us to do what? All praises. All praises. Con, you can find those you can find those commandments in Deuteronomy 5 and also Exodus 20. Okay? All right, bro. All right, bro. Hey, All praises. Just, hey, get at us, bro. Give you some of these, bro. We'll give you some real fast, bro. All right. All right, All right. All praises, man. For her feeding the sheep, man. This is Ezekiel 39, verse 23. Bring it out. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. So if we want to know why we went into captivity, it's because we went into captivity for our iniquities. Right? We don't repent for what we've done wrong. We continue to do wrong and we're, we're happy in it. We're happy being slaves. We're happy slaves. Hey, the best slaves are the happy slaves. Right? Oh my God. Please don't get that. So we, uh, we, we want, people want to be slaves, man. They're happy with it. They don't repent from what they do. Right? Go ahead. Because they trespassed against me. Therefore, hid out my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. So we all fell by the sword. We wanted to do whatever we wanted to do. So we're in this dead state. We're walking around, not driving, not being driven, right? We're in a slave mentality, right? We, we have uh, our slave master's last names and we're happy about it. This is why we went into captivity. This is why we became slaves, right? Now have you something? You finish according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them right. and hid my face from them. All right. Let me get what I got you going, This is Deuteronomy 28 and 46. Bring it out. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. Man, and these signs will be upon us forever. Right? They will be upon us forever, man. So this is how you identify if you're a slave. This didn't happen to everybody. This didn't happen to the white man. This didn't happen to the Asians. This didn't happen to the Arabs, right? This only happened to the nation of Israel, which are blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians. Ah. Your names were stripped from you. Ah. Your culture, your worship of God was stripped from you, right? This is how we identify who, uh, who we are today. This is how you see and separate the slaves from the non-slaves. I bet you I can go uh, ask a, a white man today, and his name matches up with his forefathers' names. Ah. But your name matches up with their names. Why is that? Why does your last name match up with their names? Because it's an identity marker to show that you were a slave, right? And, and we, we remain in this sickness uh, state. We sick, and we think we're free, but we're not free. The only way we can get free is by coming back to the law, statutes, commandments of God, man. That's a fact. This, this is Isaiah 1, verse 3. Bring it out. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. Hey, and our people don't even consider it. And it's sad, man. Our people don't care. Our people don't want to know that they're Israelites. They're, they want a change, but they don't want to do nothing to change. They don't want to do nothing to receive the change. They just want it to happen. A lot of our people in Christianity, they expect their blessings to fall from the sky. They don't want to do nothing to receive the blessings, right? It says, the ox knoweth his owner, the ass his master's crib. But Israel doeth not know, nor do they consider. Right? Go on. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity. It said, a sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, right? 
sin on top of sin on top of sin and they won't repent they won't turn away from it right go ahead a seed of evildoers uh -huh. children that are corruptors they have forsaken the Lord. They have what? They have forsaken, forsaken the Lord. They have what? They have forsaken, forsaken the Lord. Hey, you have forsaken the Lord. God told you what you're supposed to wear. He told you what you're not supposed to wear. He told you what to eat. He told you what not to eat. But yeah. you have forsaken really? the Lord. Really? Really? Right? He told really? you he's forsaken. Really? You have forsaken really? him. Look, really? Right? Really? Go ahead. I get Go ahead. one I get Go ahead. one damn leg. Right, I get one leg. One leg. You tell me what the Lord told me. Look, wow. I got one Amos, leg. this is why you got one leg. Amos three and one. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I have brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you. Therefore he will what? Therefore I will punish you. Therefore he will what? Therefore I will punish you. Why do bad things happen to us? For all your iniquities, for all your sins, for all, and we don't know why, we, we, we are lost in our confusion to know why bad things happen to us. Why do bad things happen to us? Because we have committed iniquity. Because we have sin. We don't even know what sin is. We're out here teaching our people the basics, the one-on-one -on -one basics of the scriptures, man. Because our people don't know what sin is. The preachers have failed us, right? We have been breached, right? Our preachers have been breached. Our, our nation have been breached, right? We don't know. We're lost. And we're going to show our people what they're supposed to do according to the Bible, right? All right. Because of our iniquities, this is why bad things have happened to us, man. I want to get that Nehemiah 9, too. God. <clears throat> this is Nehemiah 9 and 36. So like we wasn't done on that Isaiah either. Hold on, so like, we will come right to that one. This is Isaiah 1 verse 4. Bring it out. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, uh -huh. a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. Why do bad things happen to us? Because we forsake the Lord. Uh -huh. We don't want to be obedient to him. We don't want to follow his laws. Anytime the laws come out on the streets, people get mad or they leave. That's a fact. Because they don't want to do it. They are sinful people laden with iniquity, covered with iniquity, covered with sin, and they don't want to repent. Right? Go ahead. They are, go they are going away backward. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole head is sick. And the whole heart faint. And the whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. Hey, the Bible is powerful, man. The Bible is powerful. Read that part again. From the sole of the foot. From the sole of the foot, you sick. Even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. I hope the camera caught that. I hope the camera caught that, man. That's powerful, man. The Bible is powerful, bro. The Bible is powerful, bro. Go ahead. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. Uh, they haven't been bound up, neither nullified with ointment, right? Come on, let's get that. What you got? Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. This is. This is. Can you do right now? Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk? No, we want to hear. No, no, no. We want to hear. We want to hear. Can I uh, how you doing, sis? Masterpiece? Yep. So, uh, sis? What's up, though? So, I, I, sis, so have you have you taken heed of anything that the brother was bringing out? We had the brother, uh, Mahar was bringing, he was talking to you uh, last time he was there. Did you take heed of anything? Did you remember anything that he was talking to you about? Something like that? Something a little bit? So, you know who you are according to the Bible. We're going to start with the basic, simple things, right? You know who you are according to the Bible. Since you got to hear this too, this is important. It's for you. I'm just chilling. Go. Do y'all think this? Okay. Well, we love you, sis. We want to show you we love you. So, uh, what's what's your uh, so what? Who are you according to the Bible? Okay. Well, you are an Israelite according to the Bible. Right? Do you know what you're supposed to do as an Israelite woman? 
You don't? Okay, sis. Um, well, we got to be repetitive. You know what I'm saying? This is love. This is love, sis. This is love. This is all we got to do. Um, did you have something? Yeah, let's go ahead and get that classic. And uh, uh, let me get, go ahead and bring that out. This is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Bring it out. And now, Israel, what did the Lord thy God require of thee? So, you, an Israelite woman, what does the Most High God expect from you? Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, uh -huh. and to serve the Lord thy God. Well, this is how you love the Most High God, by fearing him and walking in his ways. Go ahead. Well, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So you do it the very best you can with all your heart, with all your soul. Go ahead. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Is that more than that? God. And his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Uh -huh. To keep his commandments because it's for your good. This is how you're going to prosper. This is how you show God you love him. You were very sincere the last time you came up. That was a beautiful... Um, a beautiful video you know what I'm saying people love that video they love to see our sisters get edified and uplifted to told what they're supposed to be doing and actually doing it right to get us out of this hellish condition this is a hell this is hell God. they're all six one this is hell man you know what I'm saying we got to change our people one mind at a time one spirit at a time we're trying to change our people you know what I'm saying to get it out of, get us out of this condition we got people dying left and right why did my cousin die why did my auntie die why did this happen because we refuse to keep God's commandments. All we got to do is keep his commandments. Right? He says, if we shall bethink ourselves and remember who we were, then he will turn his face back to us. Then he will start blessing us. But we got to do what he told us to do first. Right? If I'm your child and you say, and I say, Ma, why aren't you doing what I want you to do? You're like, because you ain't doing what I want you to do. You the mama. Right? I'm supposed to do what you want me to do. Right? If you the mama. That's the same way with the Most High. All right, go ahead. Though. This is First Timothy two verse nine. Bring it out. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. So this is the Most High God is telling our women to adorn them. Not uh, it's not what makes you a woman is not what you adorn yourselves with, but you're supposed to be modest, right? Our women are supposed to be modest and covered up as women. And right, let me get this on the van too. If you get my Bible, it's the Zondervan, it's the Zondervan Comeback Bible Dictionary. We're going to see exactly how the women look, as, as what, how they please the Most High. This is how they please them. But go ahead. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with boarded hair or gold or pearls or costly array. Uh -huh. So our women are supposed to be modest. We have an example of our women. She's covered up. Her head's covered up. She's got a dress on. That's what the Most High God is pleased with. Right? So, did you have any questions? Okay, all praises. So I appreciate your humility, too. But it's uh, dress. It's dress. Oh, dress. dress. Okay. But, um, did you, you didn't have any questions for us? Okay, all praises. So, do you know who you are according to the Bible? You are an Israelite. Do you remember who you are? Israelite. From the tribe of Judah. Right? I don't want to fill you too much with, uh, with this, but you're an Israelite, sis. From the tribe of Judah. Um, let's get... This is uh the Zonovan Combat Bible Dictionary. This is women's dress. Among the Hebrews, neither sex was permitted by Mosaic law. Oh, sorry. The women wore long garments reaching almost to the feet with a girdle of silk or wool. So it said our women wore long garments reaching almost down to their feet. Go ahead many times having all the colors of the rainbow so this is a modest well, this is a modest dress and this is what pleases the most high okay often such a garment would have a fringe hanging from the waist right so the some of the dress some of the dresses the women wore fringes hanging from their waist they were very beautiful to see right let me get judith uh also just to show how beautiful our women were man hey they're like in judith to all of our women man I want to show y'all this. This is, this is beautiful, man. This is Judith 10, verse 18. Bring it out. It's locked. Then was there a concourse throughout all the camp, for her coming was noised among the tents. And they came about her, and she stood without the tent of Halfernes. So they heard her coming, man. They saw, they, heard, they saw Judith coming, and they heard her coming. So this is about Judith. This whole book is about Judith and what she did, right? 
till they told him of her, and they wondered at her beauty. They wondered at her beauty, right? Go ahead. And admired the children of Israel because of her. They, they, they admired all the children of Israel women based off of what she looked like. We just read in a, a Zondervan Comeback Bible Dictionary of what the women dress, how they wore, right? They wore uh, long garments almost down to the foot, and they would they would also wear uh, 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 fringes around they around their waist, right? But go ahead. And every one said to his neighbor, "Who would despise this people that have among them such women? Surely it is not good that one man of them be left, who being let." Go might deceive the whole earth. Right. So hey, they liken the Jilly, uh, Judith, the, that one woman to all of our, our our Israelite women. Right. She was that beautiful, man. They they saw her as being that beautiful. So, do you know who you are according to the Bible? Who are you according to the Bible? All praises, sis. All praises. You're an Israelite according to the Bible. Right. All praises, sis. So do you know what you're supposed to do to love God? And to show us love, let me get um, fringes, numbers 18, number numbers 15. So, do you know what you're supposed to do as an Israelite woman? Okay, go ahead. This is uh, Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. No. Well, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So it says, speak unto the children of Israel and command them that they make them fringes on the borders of their garments. Go ahead. Throughout their generations, and they that put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. You're supposed to put a ribbon of blue uh, uh, around your uh, fringes, right? Hold on just a second. Let me get something else for you. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, so, you see what the brother got on? Those are fringes, according to uh, the Bible. And we're supposed to put those on to show love to our people. And to keep the commandments. I want uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22 through 23. Ephesians 4, 22 through 23. I'll get, uh, I'll get him to get it up. Ephesians 4, 22 and 23. I'm going to show you something, sis. Uh, 22 and 23. This is, this is Ephesians 4 and 22. Bring it out. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man. So you're supposed to put off what you used to know. What you thought was right, you're supposed to put that off. Right? Go ahead. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. It's corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Go ahead. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind is where your spirit sits. Your mind is where your spirit is. So when you, as a lady, as a beautiful woman of Israel, when you go and put on something that belongs to a man your spirit changes your mind changes it wants to be more masculine you talking to me bro if a man goes and put on a woman's dress his spirit changes his mind changes right he wants to be more feminine and what he thinks a woman is supposed to be and he starts to act like a woman your spirit changes based off of what you wear you understand if, if you was to wear a beautiful dress, right? We're like, hey, uh, hey uh, Master P, uh, uh, what is it? Masterpiece. 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 If, I, if I was like, hey, we're about to go to this beautiful uh, uh, dance, right? It's going to be kings and queens there, right? I want you to dress in your best dress, wear a, a, a dress. You come on, you come out and you dress like a, uh, uh, you got the um, dress on. Right, you're going to start to your mindset, your spirit is going to change. You're not going to be as uh, as masculine as you would if you was to wear pants. Right, if a man was to wear a dress, like I said, he would act more feminine. Okay. Changes the spirit of the person. Right, uh, Deuteronomy 22 and five. This is why we got this more on that. Read that again for me. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So we got to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We got to be changed in the spirit of the mind. Is there more on that? And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So you got to put on the new man, which is righteousness, according to God. You see what I'm saying? You got to put on the new person. So you got to you got to be in obedience to what God said. And this is what God said. Go ahead. 
This is Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. A woman shall not wear which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a woman put on a uh, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. A man's not supposed to put on a woman's garment. That example that I gave of a man and a woman, huh? Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, good example, right? His whole spirit changes. His whole character changes when he puts on the dress. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. That is an abomination to the Lord, right? The Most High God is not going to recognize you as a, a daughter of Israel when you do that, right? So, um, you got something to bring up? Uh, Come on, let's get that. But uh, just to show you, sis, that this is something that the Most High God expects from our women, and that's how you show him you love him. Right, and we know our people they desire to do what's right sometimes. Right? They desire to do what's right, but they don't do it. We gotta we gotta we gotta make a, an example. We gotta be that example. God. Right? For our people. Right? That's that'll be a beautiful sight to the most high God. You came out here as a righteous woman trying your best to put your best foot forward to try to show the most high God you love him. God. Right? That's what the most high what you think about that so far? What you think about that? Y'all know? I hope you're hearing me. I hope you're hearing me, sis. You got something for it? This is Syrac 15, verse 13. Bring it out. The Lord hateth all abomination. The Lord hates all abominations. Right? This is how you feel about a man wearing a dress and a woman wearing pants. He said he hates all abominations. Because the Bible called that an abomination. Right? right? And they that fear God love it not. And, the, the mo and those that fear God don't love abominations. They hate abomination too. That's why they'll come out here on the streets and teach. All uh, Israel out here are, are out today, street teaching, all across America, yeah. all across the globe, actually, yeah. on street corners, teaching, doing the same thing, telling our people what they're supposed to be doing, right? But a woman is not supposed to be wearing what pertains to a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, right? It changes the spirit of the person, right? Hey, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to get a. Uh, This is 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Bring it out. out know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye were wa are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and by the Spirit of our God Yahweh. All right. Uh, going into this, we know that we we we'll just jump right into it. You can't be a fornicator. You can't be having unlawful sex. Uh, you can't be uh dealing with woman on woman. It's like I couldn't be dealing with man on man. Right. I couldn't be having sex with an animal. You know, uh, all these things outside of a marriage, an uh, ordained marriage, man and woman. Right. Uh, what else we got right here? Our daughter, you can't be like worshiping money, worshiping your shoes, worshiping other gods, like people or Buddha, all these other gods. You can't do that. Not us as Israel. We have to, we have to give all praises to the most high God, Yahweh. Uh, what else we got? Again, adultery. I can't be having sex with another man's wife. Hey, I can't do that. Uh, as a woman, you can't go out and have sex outside of your marriage with your husband. Uh, hey, I got one. Nor effeminate. Nor effeminate. You can't be a homosexual man. You can't be a lesbian woman. Right. It's, it's law. We, you have to. It's ordained for us to be with. I'm supposed to be with a woman. You're supposed to be with a man. It's ordained. It's, it's the natural call. If you don't do it, then what we what was put on earth to multiply. You can't multiply, and I can't multiply. If I lay with my mankind and mankind, you lay down with woman and woman. We can't be fruitful and, and build up this nation. We're trying to build up a strong nation. Uh, That's how you show yourself acceptable to him. Right. How you show yourself acceptable to him is by being obedient to his words. If he says to do it, nothing like that lady said. 
Nothing's going to stop me from doing what he says to do, right? Nothing's going to stop us from showing God we love him. You know what I'm saying? If you say put infringements on, we put infringements on. You see what I'm saying? If you say to worship on the seventh day of the week, we're going to worship on the seventh day of the week. You see what I'm saying? If you say don't, a, a, a lot of our men and women in the nation of Israel used to be whoremongers, used to be uh, 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 idolaters, used to uh, uh, dress up in uh, women's clothing, you know what I'm saying? Used to wear uh, ladies' panties. Our men did that, but they repented. Used to steal, right? Used to worship other idols, other gods. Our, our men used to do that. Our men did that, but they repented. The men uh, in Israel and the women in Israel, they changed their ways. That's how you want to show God you love him, by changing what, you, what you're doing now, what, what we used to do. You see what I'm saying? Some things are going to come easy. Some pork, not eating pork came easy for me. You see what I'm saying? Some things take a time, take time to uh, overcome, right? Did you have something else? I want to get this real quick. Did you have something, Kevin? Yeah. Okay, come. This is Hebrews 13, verse 4. Look Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. So marriage is honorable, right? And we're not talking about woman on woman, man on man. Because we know almost like God just said that he hated the abomination. That's an abominable act. But marriage is honorable uh, before God. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. He's going to judge those, right? He's going to judge your works, right? But let me get this Proverbs uh, 7. This is Proverbs 7, verse 10. Uh -huh. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. So the harlots have an attire. Har harlots have a wardrobe. Uh, prostitutes have an attire. Everything has an attire. <laughs> the Israelite man and woman is supposed to have a dress code. And the dress code of a righteous woman and a righteous man is based off of this Bible. Right? He tell you to put on fringes. They're going to do it. Right? Is that something else? Right. This is Romans 1, verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Right, so women change their natural use, which is against nature. Our women are turning into men. Literally, they're taking testosterone, growing beards, changing their voices. This is what I sound like after one month of taking testosterone. You see what I'm saying? It's crazy. They're changing their natural use against nature. They're going directly against what God set up. Purposely. On purpose. They hate God. Our people hate God, man. They say they love God, but they, their actions don't show it. You see what I'm saying? We want, we want people, faithful men and women, that show, their actions show that they love God. That's who the Most High God is calling, man. You know what I'm saying? You standing here, listen, is a beautiful act. But more importantly... Your actions are going to show. We're going to be back out here. We're going to see you again, sis. And we want to see you change. You see what I'm saying? The most High God want to see you change. You see what I'm saying? Hey. He loves you. All right, so what you think, though? Like, about everything he bringing out. Like, do it hit your spirit or it just ain't hit you yet? It's a lot to think about. Are you considering it, though? You considering putting on a dress? Nah. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, a small point you said was, uh, you know, people rather serve like money than actually come to God. Uh, this is Proverbs 19 and 2. Also, that the soul be without knowledge, it is not good. And he that hasteth, hasteth with his feet sinneth. So a lot of people, they don't want to stop because they're like, oh, I always got to go. I got to sell drugs. I got to you know, make my money. I got to do this. Those people that do that or have that type of spirit to try to just chase the bag 24-7, they exalt folly. Hey. Also, um, a lot of our people, they don't really care too much because there's no danger right in front of them. You know what I'm saying? When it's too late, then they want to call on God. Right? When it, you know Zion, please ask you 811. So a lot of people don't care too much until the danger is hey. right in their face. But it says in the Bible, in Proverbs, that he's going to laugh when your fear comes because you didn't hearken when those brothers told you to change. We didn't change. We were like, oh, we got time. We got time, but you didn't have time, right? You said you got preset right here. Are you? I got to keep this. Hey, okay, reverse five. Right, let's get this one real quick. Because he called out. Reverse five. Yeah. This yeah. is Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse five. No. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, mm. and a wise man heart discerneth both time and judgment. I want to read that one more time. 
Gone. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandments, whoever keepeth the commandments, shall feel no evil thing. Shall feel no evil thing. So when it's time to destruction come, when martial law come and they kick your door down, and they get on the ground, <laughs> that's not going to happen to you. No, you, you should not fear no evil thing. Hey, because it's coming. You should, it's coming. The Bible has been, been right so far. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. And a wise man's heart discerneth. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Right. So when you see a wise person is going to see trouble from afar. Okay, the Bible gave us this warning. Then that means I got to be prepared. I got to be prepared for this. Right. A wise man is going to discern that. He's going to be like, okay, so what do I need to do? Because my I'm wise in spirit. I need to get right with God. I need to get right with this Bible. Right. And it's not going to affect me because it said that those that keep the commandment shall fear no evil thing. Right? Is that it? This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. Bring it out. It says, this is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. It says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And this is the scripture I had in mind when I was talking. So it said, uh, read that for me one more time. Gone. This is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Bring it out. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Something is, because it says sentence isn't executed speedily. So the judgment isn't upon you now. Danger isn't in front of your face now. Right? Go ahead. <clears throat> it says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Uh -huh. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Right. So you won't, it ain't, it ain't here, it ain't here right now. I ain't got nothing to worry about. Well, cool. I got you. Nothing is happening to me. Right? I got time. Right. I could do it later. That's cool, bro. Bro, they ain't talking about nothing. It's going to come later, bro. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because it's not here now, because it's right. It's not right here in front of you, you're not going to change. A lot of people don't change, not you. But a lot of people don't change. You see what I'm saying? And we, we trying to encourage you or persuade you to change now, to repent now, to change now. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. All right. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get this. Beautiful precept. Uh, this is Numbers 15 and 31. Out. Because he had despised the word of the Lord and have broken his commandment that is that shall, that soul shall be utterly cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. So if you despise the word of the Lord, your soul shall be cut off. Meaning you will die. People that despise God's word, they're going to die. He got it. You got something? He got it. Huh. <laughs> this is Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 11. Bring it out. And they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty. Loathe is a strong hate. Because you hate God's law. Go ahead. While they had yet liberty. While you yet have freedom. Right now, now people got freedom, but they hate God's law. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them. Uh, the place of repentance is open for you. You have freedom. Freedom right now, you have time to repent. Right. Now you have time to repent. Right? Right now. Right now you got time to change your ways. Repentance is changing what you used to do to what God wants you to do. Right? Go ahead. When as yet place of repentance was open unto them, uh -huh. understood not but despised it. Right, they didn't understand, but they despised it. They didn't want to change. Verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. Right, you don't know it. You're going to find out. But it's going to be too late. A lot of people are going to be, hey, they're going to be burning. They're going to be burning in the lake of fire. Hey, that lake of fire is real, man. Hey, they got, they got missiles pointed to us right now, man. Missiles. Right? The Bible speaks about that. Thermal nuclear fire. Coming to America, it says, well, your flesh shall fall from your skin. But I want to get this before I continue to go on. This is Sirach 5, verse 7. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord. Right, meaning don't take your time to come back to God. And put not off from day to day. Uh -huh. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. So when you are in your most secured place, when you're comfortable at home, then the wrath of the Lord is going to come. 
people get, you know, hit with all kinds of things. Aneurysms, uh, uh, they die on the spot. Boom, dead. Because you, uh, you got comfortable, you didn't make time to come back and turn to the Lord. Military right? Anything could happen. Anything. That's just, just a scenario. Who knows? Right? Is there more? And perish in the day of vengeance. That's right. And you're going to perish when your house come back. Right? And people don't think that's going to happen. A lot of people ain't afraid. They're not, they're not made afraid. Right? Was there more on uh, what you had? Uh, did you add up? Did you have more? you not existing anymore like that soul being cut off forever like the spirit being cut off forever like you want eternal life you want your spirit to be forever not destroyed not utterly cut off they said utterly cut off right so uh, he says so hopefully you hearken into this hopefully you're listening uh hopefully something in you you know only thing we can do is plant to see the most high guy is going to give an increase ultimately but we really want you to change your ways um you know, and we all, and it's, it's a, a step at a time. You know what I'm saying? What baby steps are you going to take? What's the next step you're going to take? Right? You listened before. Right? You listened the last time you came out. You're listening now. Are we going to start to see a change in you? Is there going to be a change in you? I asked you, do you know who you were? You said no. The brother very eloquently, because I know the brother's a very good speaker, I know he did a good job of telling you who you are. You see what I'm saying? But you said, you said no, you didn't know. Right? So you are an Israelite woman, and you're supposed to be keeping God's commandments. Okay? He loves you. We love you. Okay? We want you, we want to see you change. We want to see blessings come upon you. We want you to get what you want. Right? You got to put off these things that you used to like, that you used to love. Right? Put those off. They ain't, they ain't important. It's not important. You putting off right now time you're putting off things right now and making time for the lord to listen so that's a beautiful thing but we got to see a change the most like i got to see a change you know what i'm saying got to right that's true repentance that's true repentance right anybody else got anything you want to add to the lady sis anybody no nope. uh sisters you have any questions you know who you are according to the bible who are you all praises all hey, praises God, all praises. Hey, hey, make the change in you. Make the change in you. And your friends are going to start seeing the change. Right? You, ain't even, you, ain't even, you should tell them, but your example, your what you do is going to start to, you know, damn, she's changing. Right? That's a beautiful thing. To see, to show that you got the love of God in you. Right? Um, hey, and one thing for sure, everybody can't go with you. Uh, everybody ain't going to believe with you. Hey, I'm telling you, that'll slow you down. What? Where you? Okay. All right, slow so. Slow you down, but at the end of the day, it's all up to you. You got to tell your own story. Uh, so that's true. I got a precept. Uh, because, um, oh, like you said, a lot of people ain't going to make it. This is how it is. That's the hardest truth. But he ain't calling everybody. He's only calling certain people. You know what I'm saying? Lord willing, you one of them. Lord willing, we one of them. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Awesome. We only doing what we can. You know what I'm saying? At the time. You know, putting forth all our strength right now. You know what I'm saying? So this is a serious thing. We see, everybody sees that uh, the world is coming to an end, so to speak. They, they so to speak, they see the world coming to an end. That things is getting ready to happen. If you watch media at all, right? They're seeing bad things getting ready to happen to America. It ain't happened to us yet, but it's happened everywhere else. But it's getting ready to happen, right? And like my uh, my captain says, Captain DeBar, if you watch other news in like Mexico or Russia or any of these other places, you actually see how bad it actually is. Because American news is just going to give you the small stuff. They're going to try to distract you. But if you actually look at Mexico news, it's crazy. Right. right. They'll show you the, the, the truth out there. So if you're not seeing it, it's out there and it's coming to us. Right. It's going to come to us. So and when it comes, people praying. At the time it comes, it's too late. You know what I'm saying? It's too late. It's too late for those people. There's none. He's not going. He's not doing it for you. You know what I'm saying? That's let's say it's the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So we are trying to change our people right now. Right now, what he read. Now is the time to repent. Right now is the time to get yourself ready. Right now. Right. A lot of people think they uh, uh, that they little pistols is going to save them. Pop, pop, pop. Little get out, get out against the tank. You know what I'm saying? But it's not. Against an RPG, 
Again, hey, all all the white men got to do was shut off your water, right? right? Turn off your lights. He didn't even always have to have a gun, right? right. Hey, let me get that uh, 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 Nehemiah nine. I keep calling. I don't bring that out too. <laughs> it ain't came out yet. Uh, did you have something? This is James 4 and 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of this world is the enemy of God. Guys, so exactly how you see a lot of people be like, oh man, well I just love making this money. I love to get these, uh, these followers and these likes. If you fall into that trap and only care about getting a bag or, or uh, uh, satisfying your lust, your enemy of God, because the things, because again, a lot of us, I think every single one of us on here had to sacrifice either a friend, as as, as if the friend thought we were crazy or a lunatic. So those friends that you were hanging out with, if you actually start getting down with this and actually start doing what God wants you to do, you're, you're gonna bump heads because they're going to uh, just do what they want to do instead of actually being obedient. Uh, that's a so good point. A that's a good point because I a lot of people ain't gonna like you. You changed. Hey, I remember how you used to be. Masterpiece, I remember I used to be, I liked you, bro, I liked, I liked you. All right, but you don't, I mean, hey, destruction is coming to those people. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be, hey, some people see it, some people don't. Some people don't even care. Some people are born in vain, say it the Bible. They're born just to die. You see what I'm saying? That's what the Bible says, right? Go ahead. Or right, I'll preach it. This, I got that too, though. This is 2 Timothy. Two or nine. Yeah. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which in Christ, Yahweh Shah and Mashiach, with eternal glory. So we know that the, the Most High, His laws are not, uh, 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 it's not going to hold you back. It's gonna, it's gonna push you forward to become the elect. We want to be the elect of the Most High, so we endure these commandments. The truth is faith, and Yahweh Shah, we might get elected. We can, we can endure to the end. We got a better cause to walk into this eternal life. God, just like that. This is Nehemiah nine and thirty-six. Yeah. Behold, we are servants this day. He said we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gave us unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof. So he gave us the land of Israel and a much more land. But it says we are servants this day. Right? Go ahead. Thereof and the good thereof. Behold, we are servants in it. And it yielded much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. It says that they have what? The million over our body. Hey, some people feel like that they can't make a choice in order between a job and the most high. Right? The Bible does say that they have dominion over our bodies, though. Right? They do. We're servants to them. We're slaves to them. We don't even know it. Right? There's a lot of folly going on in America. And a lot of it comes based off of they don't they have a lot of freedom to do. They think they have a lot of freedom to do what they want. But it's all a trick. You know what I'm saying? One day we're gonna see that uh the israelites is right you know what i'm saying they've been speaking right the whole time right but it's ultimately the bible the Bi we just been out here reading the bible right you know what i'm saying we're going to morning. in over our cattle at their pleasure and we are in great distress and because of all this we make a sure covenant and write in it and our princes levites and priests seal unto it right. sis who are you according to the bible Israelite, all praises. You know what you're supposed to do, according to the Bible? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. So, you know who you are as an Israel. You know you're an Israelite woman, and you know you know you're supposed to fear God and keep His commandments, right? All praises. So hopefully, next time we see you, you're a changed woman. You know what I'm saying? Okay.